is now. Skyward Sword Sky sucks. It's empty, it's boring, it's poo-poo. But the most frustrating thing? It could have been awesome. Now, there is plenty wrong with Skyward Sword. The UI, the motion controls, fee, recurring bosses, frustrating enemies, stamina, an inventory full of items whose primary function is hitting a thing from far away, but I digress. That's not the point of this video. This isn't a review or analysis of the entirety of Skyward Sword. The point of this diatribe is to focus on one specific portion of this game and show how it could have been vastly improved without reworking everything from the ground up. So why focus on the sky in particular? Because this game is all about the sky. It's right there in the title. Well, bam! It's in the name of your hometown. Well, bam! Everyone's always talking about it. Bam, bam, bam. Well, bam, well, bam. So how does Skyward Sword treat this all-important titular sky? Okay, you, you, music's pretty good. Um, got your bird, and uh, hmm, uh, yeah. All right, I'm out of nice things to say. Why is the sky beige? Okay, when you're on the ground, this sky looks pretty good. The greens and yellows of the foreground are enriched by the warm tones of the sky. Yada yada, color theory, something something. But when that foreground is gone, it looks like you're sighing through a field of farts. Am I flying over giant latte? or smog. Why aren't the clouds white? How long has our species looked to the sky and wondered, what if, even in this modern era with our fancy planes and blimps all burping about in the air, we're still obsessed with this idea of flying freely through the air, the desire to shed these shackles that bind us to the ground and soar effortlessly through the clouds. How could they take that feeling and make it beige and boring? How? How? That'd be like naming your game about the wind and then making the wind super boring. Oh. So here's what we do. First, we fix the goddamn color palette. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Muffler full of sandwich. When Skyward Sword was first unveiled at E3 2010, they showed this trailer that intercut gameplay footage with these pre-rendered clips of Link. Notice anything about these clips? Those colors! Oh, that sky looks so good, I want to drink it right out of my computer screen. When we're on the ground, you can keep that color scheme. It works, it looks good. But when I hop on the back of my loft wing, I want to see the sky come to life. I want to be overwhelmed by the beauty of the sky. This is the sky that Link calls home. Nope, sorry, actually, this is the sky that Link calls home. The one that looks like a bunch of farts that you're flying over Beijing. I don't even fucking know. But why stop at just the colors? Why not have some fun and throw in some extra details like a rainbow or some mountain peak sticking out from the sea of clouds? That'd be pretty neat, huh? Break up the monotony? Which leads me to my next point. The current sky is depressingly boring. Take out the uplifting music and you have a linear slog through a big ol' sea of nothing. You can fly through hoops? That's neat. And, uh, maybe there are some enemies? And, uh, oh, look out, uh... Rocks. Screw that! Let the player make their own fun! Remember Spider-Man 2? The game where simply web-slinging through Manhattan was more fun than pretty much anything else in that game? Let's take a page from Spidey's book with this two-step approach. Step 1. Make movement fun and responsive. And step 2. Give the player a playground that complements their abilities. And then, uh, step, uh, 3. Let them run around. Controlling the Loftwing is pretty good already. It's not perfect by any means, but let's work with what we got. We're trying to avoid reworking the entire game from the ground up, remember? So then let's make the environment more interesting with clouds. Big, happy, poofy. <laughs> uh, big, happy, poofy clouds. Imagine the current sky but filled with clouds. And not the massless, wispy steam rising off a bowl of soup clouds we have right now. I'm talking big, puffy clouds. Just sitting there. Blap. All over the place. Blap, blap, blap. Really, really big ones. Blap. And itty bitty tiny ones. Beep. You can swoop around them, slalom between them. Maybe they're randomly generated so every trip to the sky is a new adventure. And they give you a much needed sense of speed as you whip by them. No need for your motion lines or your Is the tea ready yet? Pooflets of vapor. So diving around clouds is fun, but what happens if you hit a cloud? Well, if Wind Waker taught us anything, it's that Nintendo knows particle effects. Poof, sploosh, schwa. God damn, those are some sexy particle effects. Oh. Alright, so in Skyward Sword, when you fly into one of these new clouds, woof. Big old burst of happy cloud particles. Then moments later, depending on how big the cloud is, of course, another foomph. 
back out the other side with another big old burst of happy fluffy particles. Yeah! Imagine how good that would feel. Bouncing between clouds, dipping and diving, then looking at a big one and going, Oh, I'm a diving at that one. Climbing way up high before plummeting downward and then woomph! Foomph! Ugh! I want that! Ugh! Oh, and as an extra treat? How about when you leave a cloud, Link has bits of clouds stuck to him for a moment, and then they'd sort of flutter off of you after a second or two. Ooh, that would feel good. Ooh, just little bits of cloud. Mmm, that'd be nice. Now, this might seem silly and frivolous, but this little bit of polish would actually bring a lot of physicality to the clouds. Now we're talking game feel! Woo! According to Steve Swing, game feel is built from three parts. Real-time control, simulated space, and polish. The first two alone aren't enough. Polish is important. And now you have something fun and interesting in your sky. Every time you take to the air, you're excited to be up there again, as opposed to just pointing your Wiimote in the direction of a pillar of light and waiting. And now that the sky is fun, we can take it away. Say Evil Dude Man plucks Zelda away with a mwah <laughs> and you're tearing ass through the sky, and those big fluffy clouds are just gone. Suddenly the sky feels big and imposing. You don't need a perpetual storm in the corner of the map to ham-fistedly tell the player, this is bad. Bad things here. You want the player to feel unsteady? Give them something pleasant, then take it away. Wind Waker did this with the storm on the way to the third goddess pearl. And Twilight Princess gave us a dying Minda you gotta schlep across Hyrule. Maybe spoilers? Um, Skyward Sword uh, puts your bird in jail. Bird jail. And you break him out. And Groose, the best character in the game, becomes a boring goody two-shoes. You aren't supposed to take that from us! Oh, and while I'm at it, why can't we fly at night? The night sky is gorgeous. Imagine having yourself an Aladdin-esque magic loft wing ride with our new happy clouds, giant full moon shining from above. But no, loft wings gotta sleep. Fine, I don't like magical evenings anyway. Fine, that's fine! Finally, the last thing that needs touching up is the sound design. Maybe it's just my speakers, but when my Loftwing flaps their wings, I don't feel anything. It doesn't sound like I'm clinging onto the back of a giant, powerful bird. So let's crank that up to a thousand. Make those wing slaps hit hard! And when I'm boosting or diving, the wind needs to go crazy, like a flag in a hurricane on the surface of Jupiter. Like if Link's not careful, the wind is gonna rip him right off his loft wing and send him tumbling into the void. More Shadow of the Colossus. Less those bird guys from Mario 2. But you know what else would audibly sell the emotions of flight? Link's voice. Now I don't know about you, but when I'm riding on a roller coaster or experiencing mild turbulence on a flight, I ain't quiet. When I tilt into a nosedive, I wanna hear Link whoop and holler. And when I boost, let's hear Link shout with jubilation. Give me the impression that my controlling the loft wing is having a direct effect on Link. Oh, and one last tangent, real quick. Just, what's up with the clouds in the sky when you're on the surface? When you're high in the sky, you can't see a single slice of land, but the moment you hit the surface, the skybox is all, What clouds? I'm a skybox. Hello? I don't get it! It creates this huge disconnect between the sky you fly through and the sky when you're on the ground. In order to maintain the mystery of the surface for the sky folk, why not make it overcast down there? Make it all dark and gloomy. The people on the surface can be all like, Oh no, the sky is cloudy and that makes me sad. Then when you beat an area, the sky clears. Sunshine and happy days. But then you'd need to show that surface when you're up in the sky again. And while that would be neat, it might overly tax the Wii's hardware and ugh. So let's recap. Make the sky blue and white instead of fart and sad. Add happy poofy clouds and add more whooshy shouty sound effects. Bada bing, bada better game. Other than that, Skyward Sword's perfect! Just kidding. There's a character named Jelly F Who does that? Who does that? Blip, blip. Blip, blip, blip.